Let's welcome in our co-host on the day. He's flying solo. New York Times best-selling author, the social assassin, John Gilstrap. Johnny. Good morning, Robert. How was your drive in? Um, uneventful. Spring is here. It's kind of it nice, was, huh? Yeah. It was 74 degrees in my house this morning. That's like tropical for my house. We had uh, all the daffodils in my neighborhood from my uh, neighbors who plant daffodils. We were up a couple weeks ago, but now the tulips are blooming. That won't last long. No, they... That's a garden. That, that's a... Uh, Salad bar. The, t- the tulip is the uh, it's the banana of the flower world. It's got a real short shelf life, right? Yeah. If you buy bananas, you know they're green, they're greenish yellow, then they're yellow, then they're yellow with brown spots, and then they're brown, and that's all over like uh, what four days. Yeah, you got a short window. It's the same with the tulip. It blooms, it's beautiful, and then you know it's gone. But they're pretty. Yeah, for a short period. We're of time. still trying to figure out. You know, we're we're new. We got this wooded lot. We're still trying to figure out what will bloom in mostly shade, and we're learning what dies in mostly shade. But we haven't really figured out what lives. We might actually have to hire out some expertise for this. They have uh, gardeners who know that stuff. I know, but they charge money. So we're, we've been trying to wing it, and you can spend a lot of money, probably more money, winging it than would if you hire an expert. So. The Berkeley County Republican Club, in cooperation with the Jefferson County Republican Executive Committee, has their annual Lincoln Dinner on April the 20th at Air Heritage Hall, 8539 Winchester Avenue in Inwood. If you'd like to go to the dinner, they have a meet and greet with candidates, uh, keynote speaker Alan West as well. Call Lisa White at 240-464-1608. Also, the Berkeley County Clerk Voters Registration Division needs poll workers. It pays 300 bucks for one day. But they got a raise, you remember, and they need 450. They've got uh, many of these. They need a few more. Training session is April 23. Get in touch with the folks that will help you register for this at 304-264-1989, 264-1989. And now let's say good morning to our first guest of the day, Larry DeMarco from Century 21 Modern Realty Results. Good morning, Larry. Good morning, Rob. Hi, John. Good morning. Hey, uh, why the change to Century 21 this year? Why the change? Um I started out actually at Century 21 back in mid 90s. Mm-hmm. Um, left there, owned a Remax, and did did a few other things. Um, we became an independent agency probably five years ago. We have modern realty results. After about five years, we've seen the growth of the company. We have 30 to 35 agents, and a lot of those agents are new to the industry. Um, Century 21 provides uh, tons of training exposure, uh, things of that nature that, that i found that the younger agents uh, need and they have embraced it. I reflected back to when I started back in the 90s what Century 21 had done for me as a new agent. I've been established probably 29 years now. It's it's not so much for me, but it's, it's for the agency as a whole. All right, excellent. So uh, we wanted to ask you about the 6% commission. I know that because it's a court case, there's not a whole lot you can say about that, but this obviously is a case that's got national attention over the last couple of weeks. What, can you tell us of anything about that, Larry? You know, you asked me about that, I think, Saturday, and I wanted mm-hmm. to stab you with this pencil. Yeah, you want to stab? You actually I, said I that out loud. Stab, stab <laughs> yes. Strap. Yeah, stab Johnny's closer. Uh, Rob, that's something we can't really discuss too much about percentages and things of that nature. I will tell you that the compensation, um, it's been typical for the seller to pay the compensation to the buyer's agent and the listing agent. Well, that could very well be true. Um, I think as a result of the, of the case that, that uh, we're discussing about, I think what you're going to see is a shift um, in the responsibility of who's, who's paying the, the buyer's agent. And with that, um, as an example, if you were my buyer, I would sit down and discuss with you the value that I bring to you as a buyer's agent and uh, what you're paying for. Mm-hmm. You can always negotiate that um, commission. The commission can be paid many ways. The buyer can pay it. The seller can pay it. You can factor it into the financing. But it's actually, it's it's really too early to tell how this is going to come down. We understand it, it could possibly be July of this year. Is it possible that say I'm buying John's house mm-hmm. uh, in the future, I would pay, let's just keep 6% as a figure. 
I would pay 3% to my buyer's agent. He would pay 3% to his seller's agent. I can't really say as far as the amount of compensation. Uh, but but take the percentage. Are those two out. different negotiations? Yeah, yeah we're, we're not talking percentages. No, but, no, no. Yeah, um, X percent. But as far as comp- X, X percent. Um, the method or the manner. In other words, I pay yeah. my agent because that agent's working for me to help me buy a house exactly. and find one. He pays his agent because his agent's trying to help him sell his house. That's right. Or, that- he, or he can pay both sides. Um, it's it's truly a negotiable instrument. So the uh, there's a huge number. I forget what it is off the top of my head, but th- there's a big number in in the settlement that's associated with this. What is the alleged harm that was done? What's being settled? I'm not really going to go there. I'm, no, actually, should, I'm not uh, because it's it's so early. It's so early right now. Um, you know, until this comes down. Um, is it a collusion allegation? Say that again. Is it a collusion allegation? Um, Possibly so, yes. I, I don't think, like, well, let me just tell you, um, 29 years I've sat down with my seller. I've been very clear about who pays what and what the responsibilities are. I, I think what's happened in the past, um, maybe maybe that wasn't as clear as it should be. I'm, I'm not really too certain on that. But I, I can tell you, like Rob gave the example, if he was my purchaser, I would sit down and explain the value and probably give him maybe options on, on how that, that compensation could be paid. Well, I'll tell you this, you know, we, we, I mean, I won't use numbers because yeah. you're not comfortable with it. And frankly, sure. neither am I, cause it's a relatively new transaction, but we sold our house in the height of the, the wild west of COVID home mm-hmm. sales. Right. So it went you know, 110% of asking price with no contingencies, like in a, in a 32 minutes or whatever it was. Hmm. And so we sat down with our agent up front. We negotiated what, what, we would pay um, as as the selling agent, right? Because, yeah, we were selling right. our house. Sure. And we were building this house, so it, I guess that's kind of a different thing. And we were talking about a neighbor down the street who was only offering a tiny, tiny sales commission for mm-hmm. her house or their house. And the response we got from our agent was, well, nobody's going to show that house because the sales commission is so small hmm. and in, in the Wild West. And without naming names or anything else, that felt kind of, it made sense to me, but it also felt kind of wrong to me. Was that wrong? Was that, was that an unethical practice? Oh, I, I definitely practice? think that's wrong, yes. Um, I'd, I've never paid attention to the commissions. I'd, I pay attention to the agency relationship that I have for the buyer, the seller, and move forward. Um, you, you do look at, I mean, everybody wants a paycheck. That's, that's obvious. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you're working for your client, you're working for your client. Um, I think one of the things that, that is key is knowing up front, uh, the buyer's going to know, every, it, it, you know, full disclosure, what your earnings are going to be out of, out of that transaction. So the, we, we, we mentioned, <clears throat> you know, who spoke during the home show that, Mm-hmm. And we've talked on on the show here that the internet is the ruination of everything. Um, is, you know, <laughs> society as as we know it. So the um, do you how much has the the growth of these internet based uh, real estate companies certainly the word gets out yes. more easily. You know, through Zillow and you know all these other things, Redfin. It, everybody is aware the instant a house in the neighborhood that they're targeting comes on the market is that a net benefit for professional real estate agents or is it kind of a net detriment? Oh, I, I think it saves us a lot of time. The average, the average buyer or seller, they have so, inf- so much information available to them. Um, a lot of times my buyers know which homes they want to look at simply because they've been on Zillow, it's really a realtor.com, whatever. There is a lot of information out there, but I think what I pointed out um, and I have said in the past uh, the value of the agent is tremendous, and, and for obvious reasons. I've seen so many people try to do it on their own, especially on the listing side. And and I um, I can tell you it's cost them a lot of money, whether they are aware of that or not. Um, sorry, I'm getting some feedback here. <laughs> the, um, um, I think what I was talking about with Rob on Saturday was the fact that he may have sold one home last year. I've been a part of 200 transactions last year, so I can certainly bring value to the table. And, uh, and I think that's very apparent. doesn't matter how much information you have in front of you. Is it accurate information? And, and do you really know how to apply that to, to get to the closing table? Uh, Larry 
Uh, just one last thing about this suit that's out there and hmm. uh, in regards to uh, this transaction part of it. Is that that big of a part of the transaction when you meet with people who are looking for a home or meet with someone who's selling a home? Because when I've sold or, or dealt with homes, it's like number 99 on the list of 100 things that we got to talk about. I, I, th- I think it's important to the consumer, the client. Um, but the number one, the most important thing to me is agency relationship. That client wants to know who's representing who. Um, af- after you establish that, then you start talk start discussing compensation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think, you know, most good agents have done that since day one. I don't think too much is going to change. Um, it might slide over a little bit. And just my theory on that, I've always felt that the buyers paid the commission to begin with. I'm, I'm telling you, if you want $100 for your house and you're paying X amount of dollars on top of that for a commission, you're adding that on to the price. Either way, the buyer's paying um it's, it's just the cost of doing business. Like when you raise taxes on a corporation, ultimately the consumer is paying the tax on the corporation. Of course. Yeah. That's right. How did it come about? Any idea uh, how the seller ended up being the person who was paying the full commission in most cases? I don't know. I mean, it's it's been that way um, since I came into this in, I think, 95. Um, it's It's been that way since forever. The only thing I can yeah. figure is the seller is the person who has money, whereas the buyer might not have money. Well, and you know, that's a, that's a very good point. The average buyer, I mean, they're, uh, the average first-time buyer is totally strapped. Sure. Um, so I guess we'll see how this plays out. Because you, if you're selling one house and it's appreciated, then you have your money from the appreciation that you've, you've gotten from the home that you just sold, like John talked about mm-hmm. in his most recent sale. But if you're a first-time buyer... Your money comes from what you've saved. And it's not that easy when you're 20-something or even young 30s and have a family to have a lot saved. You know, and and the commissions come off the back end. We have to close that deal to get paid. Uh, So whatever whatever is being charged comes out of the closing. If that property doesn't close, we've typically put in a lot of work and come up with that amount. Well, let, yeah, because there's no salary involved in that. It's, That's right. You know, no. you, yeah, what they say, you uh, you eat what you kill, That's uh, right. so to speak. Yeah. Uh, Larry, let's talk about the Berkeley County geography mm-hmm. and uh, the areas when people are moving here and they call Larry DeMarco, what areas do they want to see? Uh, you know, it really depends if you're a commuter or if you're a local resident. And, and I do think that there's probably a, a 50, 50, 50-50 percentage of uh, the type of buyer that you have, whether they're out of state or, or local. Um, Falling Waters seems to be a hot spot right now. We have a lot of people that commute from Maryland. Uh, they want to be in West Virginia for obvious reasons, the lower tax structure, uh, more value, I should say. And they just don't want to drive too far, so they try to stay on this side of the mountain, this side of the ridge. Same thing in South Berkeley County. You get a lot of, uh, a lot of people purchasing, and they work in Northern Virginia or D.C., so they want to stay close to that area. South Berkeley has always always been a hot spot. What's the inventory like right now in terms of number of homes available to see? Yeah, my goodness, it's it's really low. Um, we do have a situation, you know, even though buyers have become accustomed to the rates, sellers really don't want to give up that rate that they've they've had, whether it's two and a half to three percent. So they're sitting there, and uh, and we don't have the inventory of existing homes as much as we have had in the past. In the past, what? Would your inventory have been on average versus what it is now? Is it a hundred houses versus twenty? Is it oh yeah, thousand versus a hundred? No, I, uh, that's that's a tough one to really say. I, I, my thoughts are we'd probably be triple the inventory mm-hmm. uh, typically. Yeah. Are you getting mostly first-time buyers or people who have retired and uh, are looking to move to West Virginia? Personally, I see more of the first-time buyer activity um, with you know with what you see rent is going for. It still makes good sense to buy a home, um, should you qualify. So those people are getting off the fence, and the you know the six six and a half percent doesn't bother them like it did maybe six months ago. Are you selling mostly to people who are already here, or mostly to people who are moving here? Um, there again, Rob, I don't probably about a fifty fifty. Yeah. Yeah. How about the balance of of what people are looking for in terms of lot size versus new new home shiny home yeah. where i came from in northern virginia people are losing 
interest in the larger lots and going for the shinier homes. Is, mm -hmm. is that what's happening here? Are people out here preferring the larger lots and, and maybe older homes for the same unit of money? Yeah. You know, John, one thing about having low inventory, it does put buyers into areas that they might not necessarily be interested in. So what you're seeing in Martinsburg is a great example of what happens with low inventory. They're taking the older homes and, and uh, actually putting new life into them, putting money into them and, and making them a better home. Um, builders are, are, I mean, you, you see what's going on. It's it's a lot of, lot of new construction out there. But I can't say that buyers necessarily want that. The inventory is so low. So you do see those buyers coming into maybe the inner inner city or, or the town of Martinsburg and putting more more into that. How have real estate values been over the last year, Larry? Um, you know, it was kind of flat towards the end of last year. I, I did some homework before I walked in here, and I can tell you, I think overall in West Virginia, um, I believe that the percentage, the value went up like 6.9. Berkeley County is about 7.4. The average, uh, the average sold price in Berkeley County is about two ninety seven, and what surprised me was that Morgan County is right behind us. I mean, they they are so close, probably around two eighty nine. Jefferson, the average sales price is around three sixty eight, which is to be expected because it borders Northern Virginia. Did we see a big surge? Of people coming here during the COVID times, escaping in, in, into the country, as it were. Boy, did we! We sure <laughs> did. Yeah. Has that slowed? Um, I, or I has it actually started going back? No, I don't think it's gone back. I, I think it has slowed. Um, my, I have family that moved to Matthias in Hardy County, and I went down to visit them. I was surprised at how many people were from out of state, uh, many with a New Jersey accent. It's just, uh, but Hardy County. Gotta be has, like my cousin Vinny here in Hardy yeah, County. That's, right, with New Jersey. <laughs> that's a great movie, by the way. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, you do see a lot of people moving to the remote areas. The great thing about Hardy County is it has countywide internet high speed. And that's something that we kind of lack in Morgan and, and Berkeley. Yeah. How does Hardy County have that? And we don't have that in Berkeley County. Boy, I don't know. I got to ask that to the next elected official who comes on here. That's right. Right. Larry DeMarco is with us from Century 21 Modern Realty Results. Uh, Larry, uh, typically you said you do about 200 transactions last year out of your office. Um, no, probably more than that. That that was just something I pulled out of thin air. I think our team does about 120. Then the office, I don't know, closer to 300 maybe. And, and what's the, the typical sale? What are people looking for? Uh, bedrooms, square footage, what have you? Um, typically around 2,000 square feet. The sweet spot is around 350,000. Um, people from out of state, they want land. They want deer in their front yard things of that nature. So if they don't commute, a lot of times they're looking for the acres across the mountain, per se. What's uh, a typical lot uh, size-wise? A typical lot? Lot, yeah. It, it really depends. I mean, it, you know, if you're in a track home in a subdivision, that's probably about a quarter acre. Um, because there's no zoning in Berkeley County, um, you get outside of a subdivision, I'd say typically you're three to five acres. We talked about interest rates before. We had a report this morning that interest rates are now as high as they've been since Thanksgiving. Yes. And uh, when that happens, uh, does that deter the market somewhat? Or have people just kind of gotten used to the 7% mortgage now? I, you know, I think they've gotten used to it. I mean, you probably know as well as I do uh, back what it was. When I when I bought my first house, I think I had 13%. My neighbor had 12 and I was jealous. I, I'll, <laughs> I'll never forget that. Yeah, I had 10 and a half. Yeah, yeah, you, you got a that good was rate. a long time ago. Was it? 80, it was 80s. like 80, 87. Well, yeah. Yeah, I, I know, but I mean, my yeah. son, who's 37, was born in 86. I mean, that was a long time ago. Okay, John, so. thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'll so, 65 so, you know, <laughs> It was within the span of my working life, though. There you go. Well, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, does it, how often does it happen? Because I think this would be the cool part of being a real estate agent, that somebody comes up and says, hey, Larry, I have always wanted that house mm -hmm. would you go up and ask that guy if he'd sell it to me no I, i'm not that aggressive no um i guess i could be but a lot of times the you know the the client might do that no i've, I've never done that okay but i tell you there is tons of satisfaction in in doing your job i mean um typically i mean you get to closing you you've made friends you've established relationships you know their kids and so it's it's 
29 years, I, I tell people all the time, I feel like I've played hooky for 29 years. It's, it's truly been a pleasure. That's nice. If you, yeah. if you have a job that's uh, fun, it's not a job. Well, that's a fact. If you have a passion for what you do, regardless of what it is, I mean, it, it's easy. And uh, it uh, there's stressful times, but, you know, with experience, you, you learn to kind of spot those before they happen. Somebody asked me, Rob, when are you going to retire? I said, if I retire, what am I going to do? I'm going to sit down and talk to people. Well, that's what I'm doing now and getting paid for it. So why would I retire from that? <laughs> right. Right. So what was the most what was the most difficult time other than when you first started because that's <clears throat> difficult for everybody. Um, what was the it, within the the sign curve of, of your career? What was the scariest time market wise? Oh Lord, uh, I have so many stories about that. <laughs> it's got to be between eight and ten, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, I can tell you when I when I came into this business, uh, man, I went gangbusters, and Century Twenty One provided me so much. I, I probably had twenty closings on the board, and. Uh, and I, I went through those uh, through those closings, and all of a sudden I was out front smoking a cigarette with nothing in hand. I mean, you, the scariest is is not understanding how to how to run a business um, when you're a real estate agent. Everybody, you know, they enjoy being out with buyers and sellers, but uh, just understanding the process of of having a good good business and taking care of it. Yeah. What does the next year look like, real estate wise, Larry, in terms of appreciation in the area and such? Yeah, uh, you know. We're we're very blessed in this area because of the distance from D.C. and Baltimore. I mean, what while that, it, I th I think it's going to be good personally, simply because of the location. Um, I, we discussed it a little bit on Saturday. The only thing that has concerned me and still does is the lack of an infrastructure. But uh, they're going to continue to build, and people, I believe, will continue to move here. How, how much more price appreciation can people take who are looking to buy? their first home you know rob you're asking me some tough questions i i have no clue um right now I, I don't understand how people pay rent i mean i'm looking at townhouses in spring mills going for two thousand dollars a month and uh what four years ago they were twelve hundred mm -hmm. so i i really don't know i guess inflation and everything else is factored in i look i, I live in <clears throat> in frederick county maryland mm -hmm. and i moved from I grew up in Pittsburgh, moved to Northern Virginia, moved to Montgomery County, moved to Frederick County. So kind of make, making your way back out, right? Okay. And everything I see here, I saw 20 years ago in Frederick County. Everything I saw 20 years ago in Frederick County, I saw in Montgomery County 20 years before that. That's right. And, and so that means to me that in 20 years, homes in Berkeley County are going to be $700,000. No doubt. Because that's what I saw happen in Frederick County. You drive around Frederick County, Maryland now, and all the new construction homes start at seven something, eight something. Mm -hmm. And I look at that and I think, there's got to be a point along the way where people just flat out can't afford to buy a house anymore. But you know, minimum wage, what was that in the 70s? I mean, I can remember $2.90. Yeah, my, my dad was coming home from work back in the 70s, and he was telling us that he was working on houses that were selling for 125000 we were like, my goodness, that's incredible. No, yeah. Nobody could wrap their head around that. Um, I guess it's all relative. I don't know. Yeah. Like, the more you make, the yeah. more you can afford, I that's suppose, right. right? Sure. I just, for, for new home buyers, though, I mean, there's... there's no, yeah. I, I think, you know, my, well, my son and his fiance together, they make, I think, probably $115,000, 120000 as, as total household mm -hmm. income, which... To me and my wife, when we got out of college, we could never imagine making that your first couple of years right out of college, right. right? So it's all relative to what it is. to what your income is. Yeah. But still, seven fifty eight hundred thousand dollars because that's what's coming here. Yeah, it's just a matter of a few years because I, like I, I said, I saw it happen in the other places I've lived in. John, you were showing me uh, houses in McLean. I remember when I lived in Northern Virginia. If you wanted a sweet house in McLean, you might have paid like a, a little over eight hundred thousand, a million for one of those places in Great Falls or McLean. That was a big house with a big spread. And what are those going for now? Oh, Lord only knows. I remember in four the, million, five million in the early nineties. We actually we were living in Woodbridge, and we drove all the way into um, Oakton to look at. It was it was a house that I was used to live in Oakton. Yeah, it was listed for a million dollars. The first time I'd ever seen a million dollar house. I've always been fascinated by real estate. So we drove an hour to come up to look at what a million dollar house <laughs> looked like, and it was twelve thousand five hundred square feet. Right. And it was, it was enormous, but it was $1,050,000. And it was just, it was enormous. That's got to be a $3 million house now, right? At least. Um, 
but this happens. This is, and everybody always says this. I mean, my dad bought a house in, in Fairfax County for $24,000 and he was complaining the whole time. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever done. Nobody who's ever, I'm never going to get rid of this house. Who's going to ever buy a house for $24,000? This is stupid. Besides your dad? Yeah. Yeah. It's right. And I don't know what he sold. It was a lot more than that. Um, yep. When 30 years later. Um, but that's what, that's always, that's always the complaint. And, um, but I don't know. I, the, the, the difference is, and I, I hope that's not, I, I hope we get over these hurdles. Um, Frederick County and Fairfax County and the others did not have the infrastructure problems that Berkeley County has. It does, didn't have the education problems that West Virginia has. Uh, didn't have the infrastructure problems that West Virginia has. So uh, those, I think those, I fear that those are hurdles to attracting young families to come here, which in turn are hurdles to getting the large companies to come here, which will then feed the kind of growth that will support that that kind of well, inflation. It hasn't seemed to harm it so far. But yeah, we'll see. You know, fingers crossed. Yeah. Larry, any final thoughts? Um, you know, just hoping for another great year. Um, really, I don't have much more to say about that, Rob. How do people get in touch with you, with your services? You know, you can Google Century 21 Modern Realty Results or my name. And uh, and we have a local office here on the corner of Hess and Queen Street. So, sure. Thanks, man. Good to see you, man. Yes. Thanks again.